New York Knicks insider Ian Bagley has given a massive update on free agency with OG Ananobi and Isaiah Hartenstein, and we have to talk about this as it could have a major implication on what happens next season. So what's up, guys? Welcome back to Knicks Digest. It's Chris here, and we're going to jump right into the video as we always do because in a recent report from Ian Bagley, it was noted that if you look here, the New York Knicks obviously know that both OG and Isaiah will gain a lot of interest from opposing teams, and members of the organization felt earlier in the offseason that they were in a good place on both of their key free agents as they approach their free agencies. That's according to people in touch with the team after the season ended in a second round loss to Indiana. Now, if you also look... The Knicks very likely would be happy with running things back in the 2024-2025 NBA season. Now, all of this is obviously stuff that you want to see and you want to hear. Begley is super tapped in. If he heard this, it means there's truth to it. If there's smoke, there's fire, but kind of in reverse because it's a good thing this time. But look, Obviously, I want OG and Isaiah Hartenstein to come back. I'd be fine with the Knicks running it back. Now, I'd like for them to make the team a bit better, if possible, in the confines of keeping this core together or just making it a much better core, such as acquiring that Giannis-level player that the Knicks have said to have interest in. Now, if the Knicks do want to make a massive move, then there's more of a world of a world that Hartenstein doesn't come back in a way just to have some money and some flexibility to your situation, let's call it. But it feels like we know one thing for sure. OG Ananobi is not leaving the New York Knicks, despite other teams having potential interest in OG. Now, we know that the teams that have money, the Orlando Magic, the Utah Jazz, the Detroit Pistons, and then most notably when it comes to Isaiah Hartenstein, the Oklahoma City Thunder, all can offer teams, and the Philadelphia 76ers when it comes to OG, all of these teams can try to make the Knicks' lives harder, but it depends on the team, it depends on would they really try to do that. Now, the Orlando Magic needs shooting. They're not really going to go for OG that hard. They're definitely not going to go for Hartenstein at all. The Detroit Pistons probably not going to target either of those guys, or I don't think either of those guys are going to want to play for the Detroit Pistons. The Thunder are the team that worry me. They could go for OG if they felt like it, but it seems like they really want rebounding, and they want it in the form of Isaiah Hartenstein. But... There's kind of something that makes me draw back on when we think about the Thunder. Yes, they could pay Hartenstein around $20 million per year as a starting salary, and if they want to do that, they can. But are you really going to pay a guy who is not going to start on your team or play at the ends of games over $20 million per year? That doesn't make that much sense to me that you're going to pay a backup center, a guy who that's where he'll be. Chet is not going to play the four. He's going to stay at the center spot. So are you really going to pay a backup center over $20 million per year? Think about that. What team has ever done that? And it's like, oh yeah, that's a smart move. If you want rebounding, go get Andre Drummond for cheaper. If you want a power forward who can rebound, look for that direction in free agency. I don't understand why the Thunder would want to spend so much of their cap space on a guy who's not going to start on their team and is going to cost that much money, and you have a guy, a budding star in Chet Holmgren in that position. It just doesn't add up. I think what the Thunder are doing is just throwing out a smokescreen with Isaiah Hartenstein. I don't think they're actually that interested in him. I think if they could get him for a reasonable contract, like giving him $15 million per year, then yeah, we could very well potentially see Isaiah Hartenstein go to the Thunder. But the Knicks can offer more than fifteen thousand per fifteen million per year. Thank God they can offer more than fifteen thousand per year. That'd be a problem. But um, with Hartenstein, they can offer more than fifteen million dollars per year. They can go up to around sixteen. They can use incentives. There's ways for the Knicks to still give Hartenstein a bag. He can still get seventy-two and a half million over four years from the Knicks. That's good money. That is starting center money. I don't think a team is going to pay. Any more than that for a backup center. I just don't see that being a reality. Now, maybe the Thunder will do something real stupid 
and actually give them that give them that money and if they want to you know what that's fine I don't understand it but if you think it's actually going to help you that much to have rebounding off the bench when you could have just gotten Drummond go for it I think if the Knicks lose out on Hartenstein they should go for Drummond because screw it why not they're going to need to replace Hartenstein anyway just get arguably still the NBA's best rebounder in Andre Drummond he just doesn't get the minutes to show that he's still that guy and his defense has gotten better, and we're going to talk about Andre Drummond a little more in the live stream because we're going to talk about potential replacements for each guys. That'll be on tomorrow at 7. But when you think about OG, when you think about Isaiah Hartenstein, is there really a better fit out there for them that'll certainly pay them more money? With OG, I don't think so. I think the Knicks are going to give him some incentive-ridden contract that's going to set him up to play a lot of games, and if he doesn't, he'll start losing money. And I think that'll help him stay on the court. I mean, it has to because money talks. And if if he doesn't stay on the court, well, then the Knicks owe him less money and they have more cap space. So that becomes a win-win. Now with Hartenstein, yeah, teams could pay him more than the Knicks can. The Thunder, for instance, are the team. But again, are they really going to pay that much for a backup center role? Now bear with me really quick because I messed up my hands. So this is going to look like a terrible transition right now. But it's just how we have to go for right now. Now look. If you guys take a look, teams with significant cap space can offer Hartenstein more than $16 million, much more, in fact. As I said, like the Sixers, the Magic, the Pistons, the Thunder, the Raptors, the Hornets, all have money. Now, the Raptors could secretly be a team that could go for Hartenstein, and that'd be worrisome. Or maybe they'll try to get OG Ananobi back, but let's be real. Do we really think they're going to rate, like go back to the OG Ananobi well after OG wanted out of that team? I just don't think so. Now, also on top of that, if you look and just think about all these situations, does it really make sense for any of these teams to outbid the Knicks? I don't think so, personally. I just don't think that would make sense for anyone to outbid the Knicks for the specific players that the Knicks have in free agency. If the Sixers are trying to outbid the Knicks for OG, it means they lost out on a bunch of different free agent options, like Paul George specifically, but also LeBron and Klay Thompson. And I think I, I think that most of us would agree that OG is better than Klay Thompson, but I feel like the Sixers would rather give him short-term money so they could have more cap space in the near instead of giving some four-year deal to OG. I think that makes sense, but I just really think the Knicks are in a very good spot to retain their own players. Now, I want to know if you guys disagree with me or agree. Do you think that the Knicks are going to bring these guys back? And would you be willing to get into that bidding war where you are paying Hartenstein that $72.5 million? Are you willing to give OG $40 million? Because per year, that is, and obviously there will be incentives involved, but still. Obviously, Bagley thinks the Knicks will be okay, and that makes me agree. I think the Knicks are going to be fine, like, just completely doing their thing. As mentioned prior, the Knicks are happy to run this thing back next year, and I'm kind of for that, honestly. But guys, let me know what you think down below. Like this video, subscribe to Knicks Digest, turn on post notifications. Have a great day, and go Knicks!